Going to Bud's and of course back then Dowdy's. This was the place um, to get a wedding suit. There's always tablecloths and who doesn't even need tablecloths? When my mother shopped it was usually usually on a Saturday. And my mother with five children in She stayed at home. She had no car. When we moved downtown. Yeah. She had kids to take care of. Us up and walk us downtown and Bud's was one of those stops so that we, we would make as a walk as to a the market store. probably around seven in the morning. Mother would bring us down from Waterloo. King Street to the market. Snow suits in the winter. She'd do her shopping and then she'd take come the bus. for my new clothes for downtown. school. So coming downtown we came, and I mean, going to because it was the downtown. underwear sock and pajama and store. the boys would come the last, <laughs> very last week of uh, August. For linens that she wanted for the I home, any of the kind of household here. items that she would buy here. For school. Downtown Kitchener was important. <laughs> so that's what Two we were here for. As a kid growing up. <laughs> Two pairs of pants. Going to Bud's and of course back then Gowdy's. Sunday clothes oh, as well. I remember we always went there after the Santa Claus they parade. They know your name when you come in the store. At the end of the parade we always walked down to Bud's. Yeah, jewelry store next door. There was summer's menswear. White shirts. There stars menswear. Ties. They know who you are. Coats, the whole bit. It was just part of Bud's was absolutely a staple in our family. So My what guys defined us as Kitchenerites. So when my mother brought me uptown, and it was always uptown because Heinz Avenue is downhill from King Street. So we always went uptown. So by the time my mother is bringing me uptown and visiting Bud's and all the other stores, um, I was the fourth generation to be shopping at Bud's because my great grandmother had shopped here. My grandmother had shopped here. My mother had shopped here. I was coming and now I've brought my children and just before Christmas when I brought my grandson here, that was six generations who had come and shopped at Bud's. As a child, one of the first things that I remembered about it was that pneumatic tube, the money, the money tube. Now, I didn't know it was a pneumatic tube. They told me about that later. But to come with my mother, and thinking back to when I was here, it was probably as a preschooler, and to have my mother hand over money, and then, unlike other stores I went to, having somebody put it in a little drawer and you know do things with it, they put it in this tube, and then it disappeared. <laughs> And there was all this noise, and then it would come back again. And this was just fascinating. And of course, then when they explained to me that, well, actually it went up there, and then I could look, oh, there's, there's, there's a window up there, and there are people up there. I'm here to pick up my pants and I got a call that they're in. Okay. And what is your name, sir? Uh, Talking with Jeff a couple of years ago and we were chatting about work and everything else and I told him that I really enjoyed my life at the store and I enjoyed 
my job so much that if I had a choice, I want to die in the store while I'm selling a gentleman a suit. And I said to Jeff, if that suit. happens, we'll don't charge the gentleman yeah, for the suit. Get off and enjoy the lovely weather out there. Yeah, it is gorgeous. And a couple of weeks later, I had an appointment with my doctor and I told him the same story and he sat down and looked me in the face and said, well, if you don't smarten up, that's what's going to happen to you. So uh, then Stan and I started talking. Something we can help you with, sir? Uh, I'm wondering what any of these are. The story of a gentleman who told us just a month ago that when he was seven years old, he was up very late one night and he heard his parents talking. He was up late also because he, was, he couldn't wait for his birthday, which was the following day. And the story goes that uh, his father overlooked so buying him a birthday a gift and uh, he rushed out after his work, after midnight, and he Very drove nice. downtown in Kitchener hoping to find something that he could yeah, purchase for his son and round, found that the Bud store was, he thought, open. Are so neutral that you can wear anything with them, glass pants, shirts and ties. As it happens, my father and his brothers had a history of meeting at all hours of the night. And so because the lights were on, he stopped. He knocked on the door many times until somebody opened the door. And the story continues that my father opened the door for him, asked him what he needed, why is he coming out at this hour of the evening, and he told him. And my father gave him a Maple Leaf hockey sweater to satisfy his customer's needs, to satisfy his son's birthday. As far as going back to the 1920s, my uncle, they came from a very poor family. None of them went past grade five. They had to deliver papers three days a week or deliver parcels or shovel snow. My, my grandmother took in laundry. Uncle Lou was the one with the connections because he was the older brother. He was out making a living for his family and saw the opportunity in this part of the country. And so he went, he got to know the different businesses around here. He saw that the Davis Economical Store was well run. And when he heard that it became available, he thought that that would be the next step for him. And then he could bring his, his brothers. He was the one who was the mentor of the other brothers. He had been a dress salesman for this territory in southern Ontario. Including Kitchener. And one of the people that he sold dresses to was a store called Davis Economical Store. And the owner of that store wanted to sell his business and move to Toronto. And he offered it to our family. He wanted $10,000 for uh, the purchase of the business. And between the four of them, they could only scrap together $500. So they uh, went to the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce at King and Queen, spoke to the bank manager, told them the proposition, told them they only had $500, but they were going to work hard and do their best to succeed. And he took a risk and lent them the $9,500 and told them they had to repay it in three years. They bought the business and repaid the loan in two years and never looked back. We have seen families come in for decades. In fact, we have one family who tells us that six generations of their, of their family shopped in the store. It was something my mom would have, we would have popped on the trolley and back in the trolley days and come here um, and done some shopping and then visited dad at the, at the newspaper, at the record where he worked. Um, so there's a, there's a uh, what is it, like a mosaic that's nicely sewn together of memories. My son, uh, when getting married, came to Bud's to purchase his suit. And that became an event for us. And I bought my suit for my son's wedding as well. And uh, it was fun because we were able to share as a family with a family. My mother is going to be 94 this year. And she shops here in the spring and in the fall for outfits. So we come for about five outfits. And she gets all dressed up. And Stan comes by and says, Oh, you look beautiful in pink. <laughs> And my mother smiles. <laughs> you know, and of course we're buying the pink outfit from that point on. Well, now these days when the customer comes in, they tell their stories about how their parents 
used to come in and buy their clothes and they're coming in to buy their children's clothes or the grandchildren. You know, it's generation after generation and that happened to me. I came, I was young, I got married, I had my kids, I had my grandchildren, I bought the clothes in here. So it's generation after generation. It's it's a, a unique store and it's a family store and we stick to it, you know. It, it's like a bond, you know. It don't seem to separate that bond. I could feel as soon as I walked in for my interview that it was more like a relaxing family type business. People come in and they, they, they share their memories with you, you know, when, when they bought their, their first coat here and stuff like that. I think my story could be called the story of the purple coat. I have such fond memories of it. Dating back to about 1972 in grade seven, it was kind of a milestone in my life because as I remember it, it was my first non-hand-me-down winter coat. So I think it was on a Saturday, my mom was finished her shift at the Kitchener Farmer's Market and we went down to Bud's. And in those days, Bud's and the rest of downtown Kitchener was just the gem of Kitchener. It was the place to be. Downtown was just the place to be. So we went to Bud's and my mom found this beautiful purple coat that cost $40. In those days, $40 was a lot of money, but not for my mom. If she saw something that she really liked, there was no stopping her, she was gonna get it. And she said too in those days that you didn't pay tax for, for clothes. So it was just a beautiful coat, I couldn't believe it. It was sort of velvety purple with a fake fox fur trim, fake fur on it, a hood. I think it had a zipper, it had some piping down the front. It was awesome, it was an awesome coat. We bought it and I felt like a million bucks wearing it. I felt like a real princess. And I remember wearing this white and purple hand-me-down hat with it, but that was okay because I had this beautiful purple coat. I remember going to Zayers and running an errand for my mom in this beautiful purple coat. So it was, it was just lovely. You know, as soon as I, uh, I got wind of Bud's closing after 90 years of service to our community, uh, the memories just came flooding back. And I, and I realized that uh, throughout the better part of my four decades in this community, uh, Bud's was an integral factor. A lot of my experience with Buds has been through uh, what we'll call a religious experience. It all started in 1972. I was eight years old. My mother took me to the Bud store in downtown Guelph to buy my very first suit. When I was a kid and my mother with five children, mind you, in tow would load us up and walk us downtown and Buds was one of those stops that we would make as a, as a department store for snowsuits in the winter, for new clothes for school, uh, for linens that she wanted for the home, any of the kind of household items that she would buy here. But this was really a staple for us. When my mother shopped it was usually usually on a Saturday. Now sometimes it was along with going to the market. Well often I would go with her because I was the oldest in the family. So we would walk to the market probably around seven in the morning up King Street to the market. She'd do her shopping and then she'd come do her errands as she came back down the store. And we stopped in the various stores. We didn't come here to buy my clothing but we came to Bud's because it was the underwear, sock, and pajama store. <laughs> My mother took care of the, of the suit, of course. It was the first time ever uh, that uh, a man approached me, the, the salesman, and said, here, we're just gonna take some measurements. I didn't know what that meant. They took my waist, a waist that is long gone, that you know sometimes you long for when you're 40 plus. But uh, he, he took the waist measurements and the chest and the jacket. I thought, wow, is this ever cool? Such great service, you know, that I'm, and this is, like I said, this is my first time with a, with a suit. And I felt though at the time, and I'll never forget this because, I'll never forget the salesman because he was speaking directly to me. My mother was there as well, and he was speaking to her about the colors, but for me, it was, you know, what kind of a shirt do you want? Here's a, what kind of a tie? Well, here's a nice combination that would go with this suit. Totally new for, for an eight-year-old, and I always thought it was an exciting experience. And, of course, when you put the suit on and your first communion, everyone's telling you how smart you look. And I thought, well, you know, I got this suit at Bud's. This is, this is fantastic. And like I said, first time I'd ever worn a suit at the, at the age of eight for my first communion. Well, I know about them and their families because it's like I grew up with them, you know, because they come in and their kids are probably around the same age as me and their grandchildren the same age as my children, you know, and my grandchildren. So there's that little bond between a uh, clerk and, uh, and the customer, you know. And then as I grew older and I, got res I was responsible for buying my own things, this is where it would come. So when I went away to University of Montreal, when I was living in Newfoundland and Calgary, 
and I would come back to visit, I'd always have to come to Bud's to stock up on my underwear, socks, and pajamas. The other thing is our son comes down here to shop. So it's a real family affair, right, right down from 94, going down. And uh, he just likes the pants. So flash forward to 40 years later, and I need to go to Rome to cover the College of Cardinals. It was the elevation of the Archbishop of Toronto, Thomas Collins, also a, a Guelph boy. I'm sure he shopped at the Bud store in Guelph. Don't want to speak for him, but I'm sure he did. Anyway, I was looking for a suit that I needed to go to Rome with. I was really spending a lot of time in church covering this story. And I bought the suit years later at the Bud store in downtown Kitchener. It wasn't blue, it was black. I had my own tie at the time because um, one of my cousins gave me an Italian tie right from Italy and it, it fit with everything. And being as frugal as I am, I decided to go with the tie as it was. But uh, once again, I came into the store and I was, uh, I was speaking to Stan. Stan takes the measuring tape out, takes my measurements, and I thought, wow, I had forgotten about this with the measurements. The thorough way to do it, as far as we're concerned, is to measure them first, once we are told what they're looking for. We take tape measurements of their chest, their waist, their hips, and we're able to size them up to be able to try on a garment that should fit their body. But the basic needs to fit someone properly are starting with the measurements. Normally you go into a store, there's no service, no one's around. Your hope is to slip on a suit the first time that fits them. And the customer already has some confidence in you because they feel they know what you're talking about if you followed through that way. And the first one they, they put on is comfortable. Boy, this is, it's like 40 years before. And I mean, you know, looking for a similar suit in a, in a religious experience, <laughs> two totally different kinds, but uh, was able to find exactly what I was looking for. And it was also, um, not so much of um, what I thought of the suit and you know and the fit, but you know Stan was there to offer some advice as well. With you, well, this is the kind of suit you want. It fits nice around here. Uh, the jacket is the perfect size because your shoulders are bigger. Uh, there were observations that he had made that normally you would go into any other clothing store and you wouldn't find that, and that's what I loved about it. Yeah, the, the basic fits are first of all, there's shorts. There's regulars and talls and extra talls. Uh, and then within each of those fittings, there could be today, there could be slim and extra slim in a regular, uh, and there could be stout or what we call a natural fit for those men who are more portly. And then it goes into oversize. And every one of those models have what we call a different drop. The difference between the chest and the waist is what in uh, men's clothing is called the drop. And so then you not only have those models, but you have different fits within those models. I mean, it brought a flashback to 40 years the first time that I went there, and I'd forgotten what true service was supposed to be about. You know, the customer orientation uh, is, you know, it's textbook in my mind. Um, understand what your needs are, understand what you're looking for, uh, provide you with options and help you look the part you want to be. To their credit, in the way they organize their merchandise, it never varied a whole lot. Really, I would gravitate towards this sales counter at the back because that's inevitably where you'd find Howie or Stan. And right in front of that sales counter too, they always had the shirts and ties. People come in up to the very last day and ask questions because they know they're gonna get the right answer, you know, an honest answer. And I mean, you know, once you earn a customer's trust, that's what makes it all worthwhile. We kept the same personal commitment in, that most businesses had in the early 1900s when they uh, gave that personal service to their customers and the customers wanted to come back. I think the reason that I enjoyed coming here was because of pleasant memories I had. And I think my son coming back here and wanting to purchase his, you know, a very important day in his life. Uh, the clothes that will define him as he walks, you know, greets his, his uh, soon-to-be bride at the end of the, of the aisle. For him to want to come here and be part of it speaks to tradition. That's something I do like about it here, though, is that it's not like a men's store, which is stuffy. You come in, they know your name. Um, and shirts are great. They, they got good quality. And if I don't like the color or the style, they'll order them in and they'll be here in a week. Uh, when I finished school and decided, okay, it's time to get out of jeans and t-shirts every day and become a, a quasi-professional, if, if I can put it that way, I went to dad and I said, Pops, where do you go? Where, do, where does a guy go to, to get a suit for that first job interview or to make himself look 
more professional in appearance. And the first words out of his mouth were, Buds, downtown, go to Buds, because that's where you're going to get quality uh, in terms of, of the clothing you're buying and, and quality service in terms of the care you get when you go to the store. I remember one time talking to, to Stan, I was looking for something. He said, well, what we try to have here is um, good quality and classic designs. Well, I, I think the most valuable part of this business and the, and the most rewarding is to serve somebody and find out what their needs are because we are buyers as well as sellers. And for us to buy the right merchandise for our niche, for our customer, we have to understand them. We have to know what they want. I followed my dad and my uncle Stan around like a little puppy when I was a kid, everywhere, even buying. I, even when we went to Montreal when I was a kid, I remember where we'd stay. I'd go to all the suppliers with my dad as a kid. I loved it. Two main sources for manufacturers, and in the, in the early days, they were manufacturers in the country. They were always either in Montreal or Toronto. Uh, and so all men's clothing, all men's suits and sport coats and pants were always made in the country. And they were usually, for our trade, made in Montreal or Toronto. It's kind of neat when, you, when you've when you bought a bunch of stuff and then you see people coming in going, I love that, and they buy it. To be competitive, you have to be out in the market, seeing what's going on and watching the trends, deciding if those trends are for your customer. Uh, it's very difficult to be all things to all people. But once you know your customers for the most part, you have to seek out the best sources of supply, the best value. But uh, where we fit into the picture was for the biggest majority of the people in the area, but we still had to find our niche. Oh, I've actually heard it numerous times times over the years they would um, say how much they enjoy the store and the people and the staff and the merchandise is unique they can't find it anywhere else and they always thank us for our excellent customer service that they can't find anywhere else so yeah I've heard it numerous times. A customer walking into our store would find that they could buy a shirt at a $15 price for example or at a $195 price so we tried to concentrate on selection in everything that we offer. One thing that I'm going to miss the most in, in as far as a retail experience goes is is the one-on-one -on -one. and peop, the salespeople say hello to you as though they knew you and everyone had a smile and then you get to the right down to the nitty-gritty of what you need well here you should try this let's measure this okay because of your hair color because of your your beard whatnot let's try this color and you know even if you take it strictly from the the business point of view how many customers like me felt so special when you walked into this store and you were greeted by name we, we, well, we worked here as kids after school, sweeping the floors and running for coffee and making boxes and doing all the Joe jobs uh, that they could give us. And, and actually it stood us in good training, got our hands dirty. We knew how hard you had to work to be successful. No, I worked my way up from sweeping the floors to making the boxes, cleaning the garbages, making signs and, and receiving goods. And, but that's how I got to know the business and they were right to do it that way. Well, I guess my first recollection was when I worked part time. I was 12 years old and I used to come in after school and sweep the floors, make boxes and do any errand that was required. And it just uh, developed over the years from there. Much more than we realized was modeled. Even the uh, overall uh, ethics in business and the work ethic itself, but the way to treat suppliers, people who represent the companies that you buy from, the way to treat your customers, how to build uh, a connection in the community. All these things we realized was important and, uh, and we made an effort to do the best we could. It was almost a traffic pattern for our family. We come into the store and we'll do our kind of a circle route. And I'm looking, as I look at, at the remnants of uh, what are memories to us, we'd go out, take the elevator upstairs and we'd do the walk around and we'd always come out, we never came out empty handed. As salespeople, we always found it challenging to satisfy their needs and really have them leave the store receiving much more than they expected in service. Uh, I remember doing a commercial about one of my favorite Christmas gifts ever, and I referenced getting goalie pads when I was a kid. I fancied myself the Mike Palmatier of my neighborhood when I was a kid, and that must have registered with Howie somehow, because the next time I came into the store, uh, it was a very personal one-on-one -on -one conversation about both of us wanting to be goalies when we were kids, and why did we want to do that? In my case, I'm sure my friends just put me in net because I was the small kid, and they wanted to shoot pucks at me. That's how it worked out. But we just we really bonded over that one uh, one little bit of, of experience in our sporting youth. And so what I started to do 
was because the Rangers were such a, a part of the city's fabric and I was able to be a broadcaster with them and this store is such a part of the city's fabric, I would come to Bud's at the beginning of every season and buy a new tie. And so for the better part of 10 years, I've been coming down to this store to buy a new tie to start the new Kitchener Rangers hockey season. And I, I'll tell you, even though Jeff swore me to secrecy, uh, when I came in after they had announced the store's closing and their retirement, uh, Jeff presented me with a tie. I'd already bought one for this season, but he wanted me to have one just from the buds to me. Thank you for all of your, for your years of, of uh, loyalty to the store. Well, I will miss the people for sure, the staff, the bosses. It was a great time to work at Buds. I enjoyed working every minute of it. I appreciate what the Buds done for me through the whole years, being as an employee. We're one of the last of the, the full service businesses that really mean it. You're working in a family business, they're like family. Like you've known them for so many years. It, you know, if they need time off for this, or you know, I've seen their kids being born and then their kids, you know, then their, their kids' kids. In those days, it felt good like it does even today in most cases to have family involved. And it, it stood the test of time. Stan and Howie, they're very approachable, easy to get along with if you have a problem you know, you can actually go talk to them and that you actually feel like you have an influence on the decisions that are made in the store. They know your name when you come in the store. They know who you are. They know what you need. It's just, yeah. you know, and when I come into Bud's and I shop for my mother, it's just a different experience. Now, in between those stages, this is the other sort of religious experience. The Bud's store in Guelph is the store you went to to buy your grays and your white shirt and blue tie if you went to Bishop Mack High School. And I visited that place for quite a few years in the five plus years that, uh, that I was there to uh, purchase my grays and shirt and tie. The significant events in our life have had a close association with Buds. We kill our customers with kindness, not because it's the right thing to do, but it's because we know that's the way we are and that's the way we want to be treated and that's the way we were brought up. And it, quite frankly, it just overwhelms us to see the connection that we've made with this community. And we didn't have any sense of how the community looked at our business until we decided to retire. And so many people came in and, you know, just expressed their personal feelings about the wonderful experiences they had as children and as adults, bringing in their grandchildren into our store and being looked after in a very personal way. They felt at home in our store. They felt part of our family. They knew us, we knew them. And it really meant something to them. And we're just finding that out now. As I was helping to do things to wind down the business, uh, anything from phone calls and cleaning up last minute orders to cleaning up the store itself. And as I'm walking with my brother Howie to take out some of the garbage, it dawned on me that that's how we first started here 60 years ago. And so over 60 years, I can say that as we started carrying out the garbage and looking after details, that's how we're winding down our business.